folks uh watsy released the new video today and we're gonna watch part of it i am quite sure this will not be monetized because i am using watsy's content even though i'm commenting on it so if you like what we do in this channel there's an affiliate link at the bottom of the screen will take you to humble bundle it's uh the star trek rpg bundle 10 cards there's tavern dot games slash star trek it's the Modifia Star Trek. It's pretty complete. Uh, I've heard good things about it. I haven't gotten a chance to read the PDFs yet. I bought it. I just haven't had time. So, let's go into this video. All right, we're starting at kind of uh, 12 and a half minutes in. First, they're telling you what's coming up. Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, Monster Manual, Dragon Anthology next summer. I have no idea what that will entail. That might be interesting. New starter set next fall. Forgotten Realms is being rebooted, I guess. Okay. Let's let's I go. saved you. And I'm here to save you again. So many of us played Baldur's Gate 3. So many of us played Baldur's Gate 3. This is what they're aiming for, by the way, with Project Sigil. Um, they, they they're not concerned about the current crop of tabletop gamers. All right? We are a bunch of freeloaders. All right? Players, they buy the player's handbook. Maybe they have a a D and D Beyond account, probably not. But they buy the player's handbook, and they are freeloaders. What in the sweet hells were you thinking? This is the opportunity for people to continue their adventures in this new way to play D and D. This is the way for Baldur's Gate three players continue to play D and D in this new way with others. In his 3D sandbox. Now, sandbox. We're not talking an OSR style sandbox, folks. They're talking sandbox because it isn't a pre written adventure. The great thing about DD is that the content creation isn't in the hand of the programmers, it's in the hand of the GM and the players. We have this 3D sandbox where you can bring your friends and play DD with all. All of these cool 3D environment pieces and miniatures that come with the product. And I will say, this does look cool. I can guarantee you that my old gaming group, who uh, we continued gaming after everybody went their separate ways, but we did it uh, EverQuest and City of Heroes and Anarchy Online, Conan, and a few others, Warhammer. Because they were D&D like. Now this might be more D&D like or role playing like than the other massive multiplayer games were. But this isn't D&D as we know it. By the way, this is an interesting one. On this picture here, for Joe the Lawyer, there's a fucking outhouse. All right? There's an outhouse here right here here on the left side you can start experiencing a role-playing game but in a more digital friendly format so you can experience a role-playing game in a more digitally friendly format again we us standard i'm gonna have to i hate saying this tabletop rpg players they're looking for a crossover. They, they, they'll gladly take a few tabletop players into this new VTT, but they're looking to bring over those that funded and played Baldur's Gate because they figured they have the money for high-end computers, right? Computer gaming is not a poor man's recreation. Tabletop RPGs, you don't I'm not say you can't spend a lot of money on it. I certainly do. But you can certainly get away with spending little. They want those that are big spenders. You go take those characters, a Arian and Carlac, you get to play with them and just tell your own tale. We're 
So that's the difference, right, between Baldur's Gate 3 and the new VTT. You can tell your own tale, but you're telling it in, there's no theater of the mind here, right? It's all in front of you. People who may be used to video games actually get to see the thing that you're talking about. People that are used to video games get to see the thing that you're talking about. This is meant to be a friendly way to bring video gamers into the tabletop market. Take out the tabletop RPG market. This is the monetization of D&D. This is the billion dollar property. This is the only way you get there. And this is how they're doing it. Out instead of just trying to imagine it. And it's not meant to imagination. In fact, you actually need a lot of imagination still. Okay, well, yeah, I need a lot of imagination to enjoy EverQuest and World of Warcraft, but no, this is showing me everything, and I'm going to be looking at the detailing on the character's clothing. I can guarantee you there'll be microtransactions for things that have no game effect that make your character look cool, right? That's what we'll be looking at. You actually just pick up the miniatures and move them around, build things like you would build at your table with 3D terrain pieces. That's actually very cool. And by the way, folks, this is a my first reaction is your first reaction. I ha I haven't seen this prior. I was just going through the video, skipping through, and I went, oh, my God, here's this part about Sigil, Project Sigil. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do a live reaction. So you're seeing my first reaction to this. You have 3D characters that you can look at, manipulate. You can look at and manipulate your 3D characters. Again, that's telling you, you are going to get with microtransactions. They dress up. What we're trying to do is get dress up. <clears throat> They're telling you the dress up part. Oh my God. That's where these microtransactions come into play. You're not going to be buying, uh, I don't know, a Vorpal Blade, but you're going to be buying a highly detailed weapon, right? It's not going to have any in game effects. I don't think they're going to do that. It's not right away. But you want your characters to look cool and show off to your friends. Kind of like how when we were younger, we used to paint those minis. But now it'll be done for you on the virtual screen, and you will own nothing, and you will be happy. Get the most fast, fun, accessible version of the game. It's basically playing D&D &D on your own virtual tabletop. It's basically playing D&D &D on your own virtual tabletop. Isn't that what a virtual tabletop is supposed to be? I'm confused. Just easy, fast, fun. If you played with minis before, you're just playing with minis here. It um, yeah, no. And now here's the thing. This encourages people to buy into the environment. And I'm not going to say it looks beautiful. Certainly does. And I know people that this is what's going to bring them in. My son would never play D&D, &D, but he played computer games, and this would probably tempt him. Just saying. It's just a place for you to connect with your friends online whenever you want whenever you want which is again a fallacy right you just can't jump in you have to do pickup games on this are you if you're doing pickup games that's really not a campaign i don't even understand how that would work but i'm guessing there's going to be some standard dungeons some standard adventures i understand the play the pieces are going to be like they're going to have I don't know, an outdoor encounter area, and then you can, that's the base, and then you can move stuff around or move props around. We're creating a lot of really cool assets, so you can create these worlds and, and tell your own story. The tool. Okay. <clears throat> Again, I'm not saying it doesn't look good, folks. But they're not doing this for free. They're doing this to make money off it, monetize it. And the best way to monetize is microtransactions and subscriptions. We know that. Tools aren't just about building the walls. You have to bring life inside that dungeon. And of course you can make monsters, but we want you to be able to add sound effects, visual effects. The adventure that we created to start your journey. Again, looks fine. Looks good. In the 3D sandbox. It's called Danger and Dunbarrow. This is like the best starter pack that's ever existed for Dungeons and Dragons. It's the best starter pack that ever existed with Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I don't know about that, but they're certainly going to pitch it that way because they want you to play on the digital environment. 
you playing at your table, you playing at your hobby store, you playing at your local library or in the school rec room doesn't make them subscriptions, doesn't give them microtransactions. You can also bring in any character from D&D Beyond and it will bring in all of your equipment and all of your abilities and spells and you can use those by clicking on the buttons. And, and that's cool if you're playing D&D Forever, what I call it right now, or 5.5. That's cool. There's certainly a lot of coolness to it, but and we also have a thing we're calling the Mini Maker, different scale sizes, the look of it. The awesome thing in D is you can continue to get like magical items, and then you can go back to your character. And we dress them up and over again. You get magical items. You're, oh, I've got a wand. Of, I, I don't want the generic wand. I want my wand to look special. I want my wand to have little flames coming off the end. It's all going to cost you money. Folks. And redress them up over and over again. And they want you to redress your characters over and over again. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just giving away the whole game. Not the actual game. They're giving away their monetization. And show your individuality within the group, and you just feel the progression. Listen to individuality. Every, uh, We're really trying to capture this toy by all of our assets are created in a way that's like actually buying like a high-end uh, mini or figure we wanted to feel kind of painted uh, but kind of realistic trying to capture that beautiful in between where art and figures and games come together the beholder looks awesome i i gotta say this looks striking <clears throat> it just isn't i plan a vtt i play a lot on world 20 and it um it's just detailed enough to with fog of war to allow us to play where it's mostly theater of bond and it feels like our old gaming groups used to feel this isn't going to feel that way this is going to feel like a video game I'm not saying that's wrong there's a crossover to it i don't know if that crossover will certainly appeal to i think the video gamers the computer gamers that it, they're trying to bring in that's the market. Don't know how it's going to feel to the traditional tabletop RPG players. We have an idea that's called a module. It's a DD and d mini adventure meant to last a few hours just so that you can get a taste or get a part of your adventure. We didn't want to tell the whole story for you, so we give you these places. You want to go to a graveyard? Well, here's a graveyard. Okay, so it sounds like they're trying to do a little bit of... Uh... An open gaming like the, the the early like 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 B1, you know, a lot of it fill in fill in the blanks, Mr. GM. You want to go to a mine, you want to go to town. You can then assemble them how you want, but each has a pre-made story in it, characters, adventures. And so it's a great place to start. You're modding games more than making everything. Now I'm wondering if they're going to allow it's gonna to have to be a mod market, right? It's gonna be huge. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huger than the GMs Guild if they allow players, GMs, creatives to mod up their own adventures and let people buy them. And I'm going to guess that WotC will take a 50% cut. Just throw it out there. I don't know. No inside information. I'm spitballing. I do spitball, folks. Don't get offended thing a whole cloth which is just faster and more fun for most people oh we also have a builder which is awesome it's faster and more fun for most people it, 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 that's a good dm you don't need that but okay so you can create your own dungeon you can create your own forest the level builder is sort of like the best miniature set that you could have and it's at your fingertips it comes in a variety of different uh, kits and that looks damn cool <laughs> i'm not gonna I'm not going to say otherwise. It looks damn cool. Imagine if you could build 3D terrain this quickly. It probably takes days to print out what you would need for an adventure. Pieces. So you can snap together multiple walls. It's really strong for DMs because you can use the level builder to make something very quickly, or you can spend as much time as you want to on it, whatever story they're trying to tell. And the dungeon master has to have secrets, has to be able to surprise the players. Okay. That is true. 
it's just that I don't know if hmm, it, it's kind of like when you try to run on a VTT, you scan or take the maps from a PDF, and they've got all the traps indicated on the map, and they got the room numbers. Like there, you need a second a, a secondary map just for the DM to use in those cases. But I'm sure they're they're thinking about that. We have secret doors and traps, right? We have gizmos, like, you know, lifts that go up and down, all sorts of crazy yeah. stuff. Really make that. The fact that there are three-dimensional and that there's level depth, I give them credit. I certainly do. That couldn't have been easy to program into this, and, and uh, I'd love to see how it plays out. Storytelling dynamic. 2D tokens are our way to let you bring in like every monster that can put any image on there, or you can bring in your own image. And okay, and uh, it's, and I think my guess is that's going to be the way that many groups initially play, because I guess the 3D assets are things that you're going to have. If they're giving you this ability, then much of your 3D assets, your minis, are going to be things you're going to have to pay for. Maybe it comes in the cost of the subscription. Maybe it's uh, individual price. Let's create a unique character. You don't even have to play Dungeons and Dragons necessarily, right? If you want to throw in your own custom rule set or another game. Well, now this is interesting and I find this surprising. If you want to throw in your own custom rule set or another game. So now they are pitching it that you could use this for AD&D 1E, 2E, 3E, 4E, OSR rule sets like Swords and Wizardry, Old School Essentials, uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics has those quasi 3D adventures anyway. If you want to throw in your own custom rule set for another game. We roll dice. We have toys. Like, go crazy. We're starting with Dungeons and Dragons, but there's so much more you can do with it. All sorts of kinds of games and all sorts types of toys that so they are actually encouraging people to use this with other rule sets now obviously a lot of the automation is gone but uh most of my role 20 playing has been with very little automation just the die rolls and i again i find that interesting and i think it's a smart move i think it's a smart move because it encourages more people to try out your product. We want to add over the years. We're opening it up so you can bring in any kind of character you want, like fight Drist against a robot. Fight Drist against a robot. You know, you'll be able to do that with all the groups that we're working with. It's yeah. great because... So you can find... That looked a bit like uh, maybe Optimus Prime or one of the Transformers, and, you know, okay. I, I, and I'm assuming that isn't part of a campaign or that's... These games, these side games they're talking about, they're talking a lot more than just using this as the VTT, folks. Think about that. We're using those characters, and we're telling stories, but we're giving them over to the players, so you can really play out what you've always wanted to do. The big deal is it wouldn't be Dungeons & Dragons if you couldn't share it, right? Okay. So, I mean, that, uh, huge credit. They're going to talk about the creator community. All right, this should be interesting. There's a huge creator community. They're the ones who've kept the game growing and going. So people are going to be able to share these with each other. We're integrated with D&D Beyond. It's able to very easily organize information and create characters. So they are integrated with, we knew that was going to happen, right? D&D Beyond integration. Uh, so let's, it should be interesting because say somebody does, a module for OSE using this VTT. Could they build out the whole the house rules as an own rule set, kind of like you do with Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds and, and other uh, VTTs? So that you can play that same character either in a book, on a piece of paper, on the web, or in this 3D immersive world. And if you have an original 2D map, you can okay. easily upload that through D&D Beyond's map feature. Click, you can share that map into Project Sigil, drop down your minis, and keep right on playing. I got a feeling a lot of people are going to be uh, 
using uh, flat maps with, uh, you know, uh, two-dimensional maps with 3D figures. I mean... We're starting off on PC, but we want to go everywhere because we want to connect players across mobile, console, and I don't know, maybe even your fridge. Wherever you want to play, we want to be there at your fingertips. All right, so starting on PC, so... Uh, people like me who work off of a Mac initially won't be part of it, but I could see this going to the Mac OS, Android, iOS, probably, probably tablets. They, they want to put it on to Xbox and PlayStation. I mean, this is certainly uh, aiming high. A lot higher than the VTT from Bori was aiming. This 3D immersive experience is going to be available for free to try out. Yeah, oh, oh, now, now it's going to be available for free to try out, which probably means you'll get a week or two to try it out before you got to subscribe, which is probably enough to know whether or not this will interest you. But also, players are going to get it. DMs are going to get even more advanced tools, and we're going to offer even. Now, now, players are going to have to DM to get more advanced tools, and DMs are going to have to pay more. They didn't say that, but they kind of said it, right? Even deeper, richer experiences for those who really want to dedicate themselves to the three. You really want to dedicate yourself to the three D side of this? You'll be paying extra. Three D side of this, whether it's D and D Beyond, the books, or the three D experience, want to make it easier, faster. Put more creative control in your hands. Not bad goals at all. But we also want to monetize this as best we can, and this is certainly the way. We want to thank you for being a part of the exciting development of Project Sigil and invite everyone with a DD &D Beyond account to join the closed beta coming this fall. Sign up for free right now at dndbeyond.com slash project dash sigil. And as an extra bonus, when you pre-order the 2024 digital and physical horror rulebook bundle. Oh, they're talking about the gold mini, the dragon gold mini, whatever. All right, folks. Um, listen, if you're a 5e player and you enjoyed Baldur's Gate, this, right? This is a continuation of Baldur's Gate. Um, no, it isn't. But they want to bring those players in. And I think they will be successful. And I think the physical tabletop will be a bit neglected by Watsi. But we shall see. Tell me what you think, folks. Give me your feedback. Uh, as always, be safe, be well, God bless. Roll those dice, roll them well. I will be uh, back again tomorrow with a live stream. My gooshness. Catch you all tomorrow.